Gracious God, we thank you for our children who are over the top. We thank you for ducks with Hawaiian shirts. We thank you for boxes with surprises in them. We thank you for acolytes who are showing us how to act up here at the altar. We're blessed beyond measure, and we thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. So Halloween was, for me, a typical travel day. I travel on business three or four or five days a week, and I was coming home this past Friday. I had two flights to get back home, and on the second long flight, I was saying evening prayer, and I was reading one of the prayers in our prayer book, and I was thinking of my friend Tracy, whose husband died suddenly a week before that two weeks ago on Friday, and I was thinking of Bobby when I read this prayer. O God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead, we thank you for the blessings of the day that is past and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. The life of all who live the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead. I think it was that word repose that really caught my imagination. You know, repose is a sort of ancient English word. It's not one that we use most every day. It's kind of an unusual word. And repose has to do with that sense of rest and peace that we read about in our first lesson, that vision of the heavenly Jerusalem where the saints rest in that city of which Christ is the light, where there is no pain or suffering or sighing, where there are streams of living water. Repose is something to do with that rest and peace. But as I sat in the chair up there in the sky for another hour after saying evening prayer, I kept thinking about other words that are sort of like repose. That got me sort of reflecting. And I'd like to reflect with you for a couple minutes on the words pose, like posing, poise, like having poise, and repose, that peaceful rest. Pose and poise and repose. Now, posing doesn't really sound like a sort of Christian thing to talk about in church, um, but I'll talk about it anyway because I spent the day yesterday with 16 of our acolytes at an acolyte practice. Uh, there were young people and adults who are acolytes and parents who got shanghaied into practicing with us. Sixteen of us going through the motions, practicing processions and practicing the movements we make when we serve at the altar. We were practicing our poses because we would stop every once in a while and make slight adjustments. Oh, hold the cross a little bit higher. Or don't lean on the pew when you're holding the torch. You know, we'd make slight adjustments to the poses so that the picture we presented would be a little bit more reverent, would benefit the congregation's worship a little bit better. Posing is actually the way that we start in the Christian life. I was an acolyte myself from the age of six years old, and all I did was fold my hands when the big kids folded their hands and kneel when the big kids knelt. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just posing. I was just following and practicing what other people were doing. C.S. Lewis even talks about posing in his book, Mere Christianity. He's got a wonderful passage where he says this, do not waste time bothering whether you love your neighbor Act as if you did. Don't waste time bothering where, whether you love your neighbor. Act as if you did. As soon as you do this, you will find one of the great secrets. When you are behaving as if you love someone, 
you will presently come to love them. When you are behaving as if you love someone, you will presently come to love them. So our Christian practice, in fact, begins with posing, begins with practicing things that may not come entirely naturally to us. Reverence, silence in church, standing, sitting, kneeling, genuflecting, all of the calisthenics of our worship. These don't come naturally. We practice them over time. And what we're doing is that we are learning from the tradition of the church how to act as Christians. And we're learning not just how to pose as Christians, but even how to act as if we loved our neighbors as ourselves. And in the acting as if, to begin loving our neighbors as ourselves. Posing, though, is a two-edged sword. It can be a little bit dangerous. In my Episcopal 101 session this morning, uh, somebody asked the question about clerical titles. And uh, we talked about how Henry Kissinger says of the university that the titles are so big because the stakes are so small. (laughs) Um, You can hide behind the pomposity. You can hide behind being the reverend such and so. Uh, It's important to distinguish between posing that is pretending and posing that is practicing towards something. Because the pretending is not going to get you anywhere. The saints whom we honor today may have begun by practicing things that didn't come naturally to them, but they are saints precisely because they demonstrated poise in the middle of very difficult circumstances, that they moved from pretending to reality, and reality is hard. Living the life of a saint is hard. But the saints that we honor in the church are those who have demonstrated poise. And this poise comes from a foundation that was built. That foundation is Christ, of course. I think as a deacon of one particular favorite, the deacon Lawrence of Rome. Lawrence was one of the deacons of Rome who was in charge of the charity of the church. He was the guy who knew where the treasure of the church was. And when he was being persecuted to give up the treasure of the church, he brought the poor of the city in front of his persecutors and said, there's the treasure of the church. And for his trouble, he was roasted alive on a gridiron. In the middle of the roasting, legend says, He turned to his persecutors and said, you can turn me over now, I'm done on that side. That's poise. (laughs) You can turn me over, I'm done on that side. I think of a more contemporary saint that we honor, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, also deeply, deeply involved in caring for the poorest of the poor those who didn't even have a place to die except alone on the streets of Calcutta. What you may not know about Mother Teresa, who is an inspiration to millions of Christians, is that for decades, for decades in her prayer, she could not feel the consolation of God's presence. For decades. She ministered to the poor in selfless love and for decades could not feel for herself the consolation of God's love. But she persisted, secure in the foundation which was her relationship with God in Christ. She persisted in poise and grace, ministering to the very least that she was near. The saints are those who have learned the hard way what it means to be meek, to be peacemakers, 
to be hungry for righteousness for everyone around them, even if they don't feel filled themselves. The saints are those who have experienced what Richard Rohr calls transformative dying. That's the pattern that Jesus shows us, the pattern that we see in the cross, which is dying to self, to our own preferences, to our own poses and postures and pretensions, dying to all of that and rising instead to a life with him that is meek and gentle and peaceful and humble and poised and poised, even in the hardest of circumstances. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, we say in the Psalms. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Blessed are those who have practiced being followers of Jesus. Blessed are those who have learned the hard way what it is to show grace and endurance even in the hardest of circumstances. Blessed are those who have discovered that in dying, they are alive to God in Christ. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb, that vision of the heavenly city where Christ is the light, where there's no sighing or suffering, but streams of living water. Begin today to act as if you're living in that kingdom. Begin today to act as if you love your neighbor. Begin today to act as if you are in a love relationship with the God who created you. Begin today to act as if you and those around you, those whom you love but see no longer, are around the table with Christ at that heavenly banquet. Begin to act today as if you're already living in the kingdom of God. Because you are. Amen.